at home or in the expedition base camp, we can keep our knife in tip-top order using full-grown bench stones like these ones. And this is how we do it. These are Japanese water stones and the first job is to soak them in water. They only need to soak for about five or ten minutes just to saturate them. And I'm using three different grits here. The coarsest stone is an 800, the medium is a 1200 and the fine stone is this light coloured one which is 6000. You can manage without this but it is a very good idea to have one. Now, this is a clamp to hold the stones with rubber feet so you can put it on a flat surface and the stone won't slide around. I'm starting here with the 800 stone, the coarsest one, and I'm making sure I keep the stone wet if it goes dry, it'll cease to work efficiently. Here you place your knife flat on the stone and then tilt it until the bevel, the edge bevel, is flat on top of the stone. And now try to slice across the top of the stone, keeping that bevel flat. And I normally do this for about eight strokes. Now I've done eight strokes in this direction, now I must turn the blade over and repeat coming back the other way. Lay the blade flat, tilt it till the edge bevel is flat, and now slice back towards yourself like this. Having done eight strokes this way and eight this way, I'll now do eight alternating the direction. I do this to make sure I keep the edge true to the centre of the blade, keeping everything nice and even. The thing I'm going to do now is just give this area which is closest to the handle some special attention because this is the part of the blade we use most for carving. What I do now is repeat the whole process with the medium grit, the 1200. When the edge is absolutely flat and there are no light spots reflecting from the edge, you can move on to the next stone, which is the finest grit. The last stone is going to really polish the blade and gives a very fine edge and a fine edge lasts longer than a coarse edge. But the way we use this stone is slightly different. We have to create a slurry on the surface and most of these stones are supplied with this little stone which has a wonderful name, they call it the Nugura stone. And the way you use this is to create a slurry on top of the stone and it's the slurry which is abrasive and actually polishes the blade. It may seem like a lot of effort, but you don't do this very often. What you're doing here is you're keeping your knife in absolutely the best condition. Beautifully sharp, beautifully polished edge, and it's very satisfying actually. That black streak, that is the metal coming off of the blade. And basically you use this stone in exactly the same way as the previous ones. Eight strokes in one direction, eight in the other, and then eight alternating. The slurry from the stone can also be used to polish up the face of the blade. Just keep your fingers well away from the edge, obviously. 
This is a carbon steel blade. A carbon steel blade takes a beautiful edge, but it will uh, stain and rust if allowed to, and it responds to nature. You can see this purple stain from the tannin in wood. And it's nice when you sharpen the knife like this, just to polish that away. And this slurry is all you need just to do that. It doesn't take much work at all, it's dead easy. And there we go. You can see the kind of mirror edge that that stone puts on the edge. In theory, if you've done the sharpening on the stones properly, you, you could avoid this next stage. But I always like to put it in just to make sure the knife is perfect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to strop the edge. And what that does is it re removes any tiny, almost molecular thin pieces of metal which may be wobbling on the edge of the blade. And to do that, I'm going to use the inside of my belt and I'm going to drag the knife so that the edge is coming the other way. It's not trying to cut the belt. It's going in the opposite direction. And I give it 50 strokes. I could leave the sharpening with the stropping as the last process. But whenever there's a, a vehicle available with the edge of a window like this, there's one last little tip that gives this edge, which is already like a razor, but it gives it a little bit more bite, which means that carving is safer. And that's just to use the edge of the window like a steel. And I just place the edge on there, tilt it, and very lightly, not even with the weight of the blade, run it across about 10 times. Now that is perfect. I can test it on the hairs of my arm. But maybe a better way to show you is with a piece of paper.